Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dagan Roo and this is Roo Vlogs. So, due to the fact that I got a little bit injured, I cannot do any travel vlogs at the moment. So I thought why not do a video on what we as cabin crew actually do on a normal regular day. So first off, I'm going to start off and show you what's in the bag, what I pack for a short little trip. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about a normal day in the life of a cabin crew. So stay tuned. Let's check out the bag. So over here we have my bag that I take on every layover. It is a checked in bag and we have to take it with. It's part of our standard. Over there, I have my laundry bag that comes with on every flight. Over here in this corner, I have my trusty Adidas trainers. Over there, a belt, of course. Inside my trainers, I have a universal travel adapter. I pack my socks in there. Over here, I have my needed essentials, my underwear, my undershirt for work, and my additional work shirt. Over there is my backpack, my laptop cable, and that's the bag I use to carry my camera equipment and everything that I'm going to use on the layover. Over here I just have a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, a short, gym t-shirt and gym shorts. So this is what I take on a normal, like just a, a normal layover. This isn't a cold destination. If it was a cold destination, I'd definitely add some more warm clothes, maybe thermal socks, a coat and everything else. Also, I'll have my toiletry bag in here, which would have my shaving um, shaving razor shaving cream um, hair products everything like that will be in there so over here we have my carry-on luggage this is luggage i take with me on every single flight whether it be a turnaround which is a flight where you fly to the destination and fly back immediately or on my layover flight so inside the contents i'll quickly show to you so this is just my little notebook to take any flight specific information. Over here I have my documents folder. This has my passport, my flying licenses and anything else I require to operate the flight. If I'm the galley operator, so basically the galley is the kitchen, I have my gloves over there. Underneath the red bag is for in case I do duty free and I need to collect money and then hand it into our duty free um, cashier. I have my laptop underneath. Over there is my service attire, which I'll use only for service. And then I have my liquids bag. So inside my liquids bag, I have mouthwash, hand sanitizer that comes in very good use because the aircrafts are usually very dirty. I have over here my lip balm because you get dehydrated on a flight. You have to keep moisturized. I have some face moisturizer which is not in here at the moment, aftershave, some basic medical stuff like cough drops and cold and flu medicine. So I guess what's in our bag is not much different to what you'd carry on your own flight on holiday or business. So let's talk about what I as cabin crew do on a regular day flight. So let's start off by explaining what a typical day in the life of a cabin crew is. So for me, you have to be there two hours before the flight depart. So that means I wake up three and a half hours before the flight, take the company transport to work. If I have time, I'll have a coffee, just relax, get ready for the flight. And then after that, you head to the briefing room. So what happens in the briefing room is they do a documents check to make sure you have all the legal documents to be able to fly to the destination which you are flying to. After that they give you some flight specific information, so the flight time, any special customers or anything that's different from any other flight. Also we have to do one security, one safety, one medical scenario to make us all legal to fly. So every crew gets one question from one of those three topics and then you answer it and if you don't answer it you're not legal to fly. If you answer it of course you're legal. Then you go to the, the aircraft. 
So once you get to the aircraft, you have to check all your equipment, make sure the area you're responsible for has all the equipment required. So that could be oxygen bottles, there's uh, masks in case of smoke, there's flashlights, there's fire extinguishers, and all these other things. Once you've done those checks, you have to do a security search. The security search lasts anything from 10 to 15 minutes. You make sure there's nothing that shouldn't be there. Once that's done, the flight or the aircraft is then legal to depart the, the stand. So then you wait for the passengers to come on. Once the passengers are all seated and ready to take off, you do the safety video. For us, we don't have to do any manual demonstrations. We just stand there and make sure the passengers are paying attention to the video and listening to what it's saying. Then before the aircraft gets pushed back onto the runway, we have to secure the cabin. Securing the cabin consists of making sure there's no luggage on the floor, the exits, rows and aisles are clear, the seat belts are fastened, tray tables are stowed, seats are in an upright position. I know a lot of people who travel don't like this, but the seat has to be in an upright position in case of a crash landing or anything, that is its most secure position. Also, we have to make sure the screens are down by the bulkhead seats. The bulkhead seats are the ones where you can put a baby bass in it and they have additional legroom. Once that's done, you pass your security checks or your securing checks and then the aircraft takes off. After takeoff, you go into your service attire, you switch on the ovens and you prepare for the service. This consists of making sure all the meals are heated, the carts are set up in the way for the service, your bar carts are set up and then you go into the cabin. So the way our service works is let's take a six hour flight. We have one main service and a one light service. For the main service we hand out our casseroles which consists of the tray, a water, a coffee, tea cup, a dessert, a salad and a bread roll. Once you've done that, the bar is following you so the bar does all the beverages consisting of alcoholic, non-alcoholic, they give that out, that's done, then you do tea and coffee by hand. You give out the tea, coffee, make sure everyone's happy with their meals, and then you do clearance. Once you're done clearance, you have a gap in between the two services. Now for us, that makes sure we're checking up on the toilets, checking up on passengers, making sure they have all the refreshments they, they want, juices, drinks, water, whatever they need. Now, on a six hour flight, the first service, the main service takes two and a half hours, let's say, and the second service takes an hour to an hour and a half. So that makes four hours. That leaves us with two hours, plus we have 30 minutes for uh, pre-landing duties and post takeoff duties. So that leaves, let's say, two hours, two hours for us. In those two hours we can sit down, we just have to make sure everyone is happy, we can eat our meal and then before landing or we do our second service, so let's say that's either a sandwich or a little cake or croissant or something just very small just to um, get you by for the last bit of the flight, then we start getting ready for landing. For us that means collecting headsets, collecting blankets, um, making sure there's no trash and then we sit down and we land back into the, the destination we're traveling to. Once we've landed and the passengers have disembarked, we have to go through all the hat racks, check the seats, make sure there's no valuables or personal effects left behind, like phones, tablets, bags. If that's all clear, then we disembark the aircraft and go to the hotel. If we do have anything, we give it to the ground duty manager at that airport and they hand it over to services to get back to that passenger. Then we go to the hotel and then it's our layover to do what we want to do, you can explore, whatever. Now let's go into questions that I get asked regularly and things that you might not know. So one of the questions I get asked is do we get special tickets or discounts or anything like that? with our airline. Yes we do, we get special tickets, we get ID90 which is the cheapest ticket we can get which is 10% of the value of the ticket. 
So what that means is it's very cheap, but it comes with a catch. If you go to a flight that's full, you have the lowest priority. You can get pushed onto the next flight if there's no availability and carry on getting pushed back. That ticket has zero priority. We have ID50, which is 50% of the value. And if you book long enough in advance, it is confirmed. So then you can get onto the flight. In a rare case or rare situation, they can still take you off that flight and put on a passenger if need be. So do your family members and friends get discounts? Yes, they do. We have 10 people we can nominate for special tickets, which we do once a year and they get discounted rates. But the same thing is the tickets are low priority. So if they get onto a full flight, they can be taken off and pushed onto the next flight. So if I'm being honest, I usually tell my family and friends just to book a full fare ticket. Sometimes the discounts that you get online can be very good and then they are confirmed. They don't have to worry about any stress of waiting at the airport, waiting for another flight, especially when you have connecting flights or you're going on holiday, rather just book the, the full fare ticket. Do you get rest on flights? Yes, we do get rest. It has to be certain flying time before you can get allocated rest. That can consist of other seat rest where you sit on the chair, you have curtains, you can sleep, you can watch a movie, listen to music, do whatever you want, just relax. Or you can get bunk rest. Bunk rest is allocated time where you get to have um, flat lay down time to sleep. In the bunk you have a TV so you can watch a movie or whatever, but that's usually on your longer flights. So how that works is Let's say on a 10 hour flight, you have two main services that takes four hours. Plus you have time for collecting, time after takeoff to do certain things. So on a flight like that, you might have five hours of spare time left. And then what they do is they split that in two. So you get two and a half hours to lay down and sleep. Can you do what you want on layovers? Well, when you get to the hotel, what happens after that, you can do whatever you want, within reason. So what I mean by that is, don't get drunk, don't come to the, the aircraft with a hangover, don't go too far from your hotel where you can't get back in time. Do what you want, explore the city, go have food, have a good time, just make sure you're back in time for the departure or the wake up call and that you are legal and ready to do the flight. What is my favorite destination? Well, that, that's a very difficult question to, to answer because I find every city you go to has something unique to offer. Whether it be going to America where you have amazing shopping, it's very cheap, you have all the monuments. You go to Asia, for instance, Singapore, beautiful botanical gardens, the city is clean. You go to India where the culture, the people are so friendly, the food. There's so much to see there, all the temple. Go to Australia, like Sydney, for example, you have the opera house, all the nature. So every city has something beautiful to offer you. But if I had to say, it would be one of the destinations that I've traveled to the most, which is Hamburg. Hamburg city has great architecture. The food is uh, wonderful. You have beers. Germany, of course, is known for its beers. You can walk around. It's just a great city. So for me, Hamburg is the city I would say is my favorite. Do you do just turnarounds or layovers? Well, how our airline works is you do a mix of everything. You can do turnarounds where you're flying to a destination and then flying back. You can do a short haul, which is for instance to Europe, a six hour flight, you have 24 hours. Or you can do ultra long haul, which is for instance, San Francisco, which is a 16 hour flight. Or even multi-sectors where you fly to Asia, then Australia, back to Asia, and then back to uh, Dubai. So we fly a mixed range of different flights. We don't have certain fleets, long haul fleets or short haul fleets. We have a mix. Do you only just work in economy or do you work in business and first course? Well, how our airline works is you start off in economy, you work there until you've got enough experience, and then you get upgraded to business class. Once you get upgraded to business class, you move on to first class. From first class, 
senior, so cabin supervisor, which operates either business or economy. And then eventually you can be a purser, which is in charge of all the cabins and the cabin crew. Yes, yeah, so I hope this video has been informative. If you have any further questions or queries, just drop it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification to know about my, my future videos like travel vlogs, videos about being cabin crew, etc, etc. Until next time, peace.